Okay, hello artists. Welcome back to another Art Life Conversations podcast. I'm your host and full-time professional artist and teacher and coach and mentor and all of those things, Kelly Folsom. So happy and delighted to be here with all of you again today. And today we're going to be talking about how to find your style your art style, or AKA what I like to call finding your artistic voice. So this topic has been on my mind and on my heart because in the Art Life School right now, um, the artists in that program are going through my Finding Your Artistic Voice course uh, and program there, and it's just been amazing. It's been so amazing to watch all of these artists discover more about themselves, open up to what their true desires are as an artist and who they truly are as an artist, right? So I know that this was something that I really struggled with as a beginning artist, and I had a lot of questions around it, a lot of confusion about it, and I really was unclear as to what my art style or my artistic voice was. And there really wasn't a lot of help available at the time. This is back in like 2005 to 2008 in that time range. And um, at least I couldn't really find a lot of help and mentorship and teaching in this, even enrolling in a full-time art school, getting a degree, there wasn't a lot of guidance around this topic. Like, how do you find your art style or your artistic voice? What the heck even, is that to begin with um so so let's go there first like what is your art style or your artistic voice well i really see it as a combination of a few different things knowing what i know now after the last you know 15 years so your style or your voice is really a combination of why it is that you create okay um how you like to create it or how you create it and what you create, okay? So we're gonna be diving into um, these three areas. I'm gonna be just giving you some, some things to think about, questions to ask yourself, because one of the number one, pro there's, there's some obstacles and problems that I've seen, um, that I experienced myself, and I've also seen artists that I've worked with face as well in terms of finding their artistic voice um, and finding their style. And you know, one of them is um, just not, not knowing enough about art, like enough about what's out there. <clears throat> so number one, maybe not really having a broad enough understanding to begin with, having a very kind of small, limited understanding of, of different kinds of art, art styles, and maybe not experimenting enough with those different approaches and different kinds in the beginning. Um, number two could be um, also like choosing too soon, you know, maybe choosing one path or one thing too soon and then just like sticking with it for too long, even if it doesn't feel like it's an alignment for you. Like I know for me, um, one of my first painting classes I took was actually an acrylic painting class and I had bought all these acrylics. I signed up for a class, bought all these acrylics. And then after that, it was like, no, I can't try anything else. I've already spent $200 on acrylics, so I can't give up. <laughs> so, so you could be somebody like that, like I was. Maybe you're a lot like me, and I was just super stubborn and refused to try other things because I had already invested $200 in acrylic paints, right? Which is kind of funny whenever you think about it because it's like, wait, this is something that you um, are supposedly wanting to do for the rest of your life. You know? So $200 is really not that big of a deal to say, hey, you know, this acrylic thing just ain't working for me. And really at the time I made the assumption that I was just not going to be a painter. I made the assumption at the time that just because I, I didn't click with acrylics, I made it mean that I wasn't good enough. Like I wasn't good enough at painting. And um, really what it, the truth that came out was that I really just did not click with acrylics because whenever I did enroll in art school, the first time I used oil paints, I just immediately connected with that medium, with oil paint. So that was one piece of one discovery of my art style that I kind of inadvertently stumbled upon was oil paint. 
Um, and heck, if I hadn't enrolled in that particular art school that required us to buy oil paints, who knows? Maybe I would have never found it. Maybe I wouldn't have ever even become a painter, right? Maybe I would have just stuck with drawing or kept endeavoring on my sculpture path. And I'll say that's the other thing is I was really um, trying a lot of different art forms in the beginning. I had grown up drawing, of course, so I was taking drawing classes, different kinds of drawing classes. I um, I experimented with you know making abstract art that really there was like no connection there for me with the abstract art. Um, I was taking sculpture classes, which I actually did have some some love for at the time, um, but then later decided that that wasn't really you know uh, the best path for me. So sometimes in the beginning, it's just a matter matter of making sure that you are trying enough things and really not making it mean like please don't do what I did making making acrylic painting mean that I just wasn't going to be a good painter because I lost two years you know <laughs> it was like I lost two years being of you know two years of time that I could have applied towards oil painting but you know in the end everything worked out for the best and and I'm glad that I got all the gifts out of the that acrylic time as well um Okay, so then the other kind of obstacle that I see happen for artists in finding their own um, art style, and let me just clarify that when you find your own artistic voice, your own art style, it does not mean that your art is entirely different than everybody else's in the world, okay? That you are just so unique and the art you produce is just so unique just to you. You know, that really does not happen, okay? None of us are living in a vacuum or in, you know, in a bubble where that where that occurs right so but what it does mean is that you have really found um, your purpose as an artist what's really in alignment for you in terms of the materials that you choose the subject matter that you that most or subject matters that most appeal to you even sometimes down even to the colors that you resonate with the most or are you more turned on by painting atmosphere or painting luminous light or you know maybe you're more turned on by structure and form and shape and design you know and pattern so it's it really can even get down even to those really kind of niche areas or minutia aspects of the elements of art and what really resonates with you the most and just stepping into that fully as an artist and just claiming it and owning it like this is what's in alignment for me as an artist this is what excites me the most this is what challenges me the most or interests me the most um, this is what brings me the most joy or the most uh, sense of fulfillment maybe for one artist it's really telling a narrative and for another artist like myself I don't really care about narrative art you know um, so it's things like that that you really do want to get clear on um, in your art now the next um, obstacle I know that I experienced in finding my own artistic voice was really I guess kind of a combination of like imposter syndrome um, or like not feeling like I was a real artist if I, you know, went against what one of my teachers thought um, or, yeah, broke the rules somehow, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. So, but I really think it comes down to the imposter syndrome thing. Um, so once we kind of have a broader idea, you know, we've, we've experimented, we've tried different mediums, we've explored um, art history and contemporary art and explored different subject matters, different approaches to art making. We've really gotten some clarity around all of those things. Um, maybe at that point we found, you know, a teacher or some teachers that could really help teach us the skills that we needed and we're in alignment with you know that that kind of art that really resonates with us the most well sometimes what can happen there is that we can get so attached to um, what that teacher has to say you know almost like a parent in a way um, to where we might get into a place of like imposter syndrome like if we do and some teachers will even kind of um, perpetuate this kind of pattern I think you know unknowingly but um, I know for me I really did struggle with this because I had a particular teacher who I really admired I loved his work I really admired his work but also the 
the whole way that he painted was not totally in alignment for me, you know? So again, this comes down to how you create as well. So some good questions to ask yourself might be like, you know, how do you like to create? Do you like to work from photograph? Do you like to work from life? Do you like to work purely from imagination? Um, do you like to take a long time on a painting? Do you like to paint small? Do you like to paint big, you know? Um, are you, do you like to paint quickly, you know, or a la prima, you know, which is what I do. And so this teacher in particular, you know, really had, he had strong opinions about what makes a good painting um, and how to go about making that good painting, right? And so some of those opinions and some of his approaches were just not a good fit for me, although I loved his artwork. And so I really had to like separate what are the qualities of him in his art that really do resonate with me and then which ones don't and take the ones that resonate with me and leave the rest behind and allow myself to step into who I am fully as an artist. And I really hope that all of you will be able to do the same thing as well for yourself regardless of you know who you're studying with and if you're studying with me of course regardless of you know uh, and I try really hard not to have too strong of opinions for this reason because I know that people can really get you know stuck in that kind of imposter syndrome and really wanting to you know kind of get the approval perhaps of their teachers okay so how you create I already gave you some questions on that what you create you know um, do you do you love painting portraits figures do you love interiors still life abstract you know landscape um, and then you know getting even more uh, granular with that analyzation so of course this is always a matter of knowing ourselves right like know thyself right <laughs> so key and so critical so that you can really step into who you really are as an artist um, definitely just taking that time you know and that's another obstacle I've seen is just artists um, who just don't take the time for that introspection and that exploration and experimentation that you really need to do as an artist to find a strong art style and find your true artistic voice, your true artistic identity. Okay, my friends, I hope that this has been helpful to you. Um, you can kind of rewind perhaps and answer some of the questions that I presented to you and also coming up with your own um, questions and then looking at those problems and obstacles that I mentioned just to see like if you are kind of falling prey into any of those um, categories there as a way for you to be able to find your artistic voice. Okay. So I hope this has been helpful to all of you. Um, it's my pleasure to be here with you. As always, um, leave comments below. Make sure you subscribe, like this video, share it out to other artists if you found it helpful and useful to you. And as always, you can find many more resources as well as signing up for the Art Life School program over at Art Life with Kelly, K-E-L-L-I.com. All right, until next time, happy painting, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.